tell me, who are the likely winners and losers for the budget? Thanks so much for having me, Holly. Look, I think politics is all about priorities and, you know, this budget is going to be an expression of this in terms of what the government is going to be looking to do to position themselves ahead of the election. So I think ultimately the people who are going to be the winners are going to be the people who've done the work engaging with politicians and particularly the government and have uh, ensured that their voices are heard in this space. Uh, but I think, you know, from the perspective of the current Labor government, I think we're going to see them um, investing along grid lines, so those areas that they're well known for and that they're strong. So we're going to be looking at education, health and this kind of stuff, but also with recent events and recent developments. I'd be surprised if we don't see more funding in domestic and family violence as well. So really it's going to be uh, around setting that up, I think, um, for going into mm -hmm. the election, remembering as well that this federal budget is also about the federal election, but the Queensland election that's coming up too. Yeah, there are so many parts at play here, aren't there? Treasurer Jim Chalmers wants his surplus. Do you think Australians really care about that? It's a good question. Uh, I think there is there is an element of that, but I think the really interesting part of it is the way that parties want to position themselves to be seen as fiscally responsible. And so, obviously, you know, the surplus is the big thing in terms of, you know, the big indicator that they can give to the constituency that they're able to do this, that they're able to manage the taxes that are taken from um, the constituency. But the kind of stuff that we look at with the clients that we work with is how do you position yourself such that you're effectively solving a problem for the government? And so you might be looking at uh, a surplus in the context of, uh, or contributing to the surplus uh, in the context of having an effective or an efficient program where you might be able to enact or help the government achieve a cost saving in another area. And so a lot of what we do supporting those clients and, and what we tell them to do is to, to talk to government about that, how they're particular solution is going to solve that problem for them. Yeah, incredible. I mean, to be fair to Treasurer Chalmers, it's been a pretty tough job for him, recovery from the pandemic and then coupled with inflation and a slowing China, all making the current economic landscape pretty tricky to manage, to say the least. But it's been an incredibly tough time and still is for millions of Australians. The continuous rate rises, the cost of living, not to mention a series of other issues dominating Australians' minds like gendered violence, as you mentioned before. Do you think voters will still have confidence in the government after this budget? Can it possibly do enough to get voters' confidence back? Well, I, that's an interesting question. And I think that one of the things that you should look for uh, when the budget papers come out is a line item called decisions taken, not yet announced. Because what that is, is that's funds that the government is going to put to one side to respond to those things that come up that voters are going to want them to respond to uh, once the budget is handed down um, and ahead of the election as well. Uh, and this is money that's really important to pay attention to for a couple of reasons. Again, in the sectors that we work to with the social sector clients that we support and Australian businesses too, I'm often using this as an indication to them to show them that, hey, there actually is money available in this budget for you if you know how to work your solution, uh, get in front of the right people and pursue persuade them that there should be investment from that allocation into the programs that you're talking about. So I think when we're looking at what else governments can do for voters, I'd be looking at that pool there, noting that not all of that money is going to be for the election or for responsive sort of budgeting, you know, to address issues as they arise but there'll be a good portion of it that's available to do that. And so as the government continues to listen to the constituency and likewise the crossbench and the opposition as well, they're going to be listening to the constituency and to voters as well. They're going to be listening to what it is that they want, what it is that they need and what it is that they can provide in the budget, but also between the budget and the election and at the election, that's going to improve the lives of voters in some way. And so that's what I would think about. Uh, that's how I see that from an organisational perspective, advocating to government for funding, but it's also how I would view it, and I do view it as a voter, but I would encourage voters to see it that way as well.